G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today's episode is all about skimmers. How to diagnose problems with your skimmer, how to fix those problems, and how to tune your skimmer so that you get the absolute maximum efficiency out of it. Okay, so we're just setting up for the job. We've put some towels down because when we take the skimmer out from the sump, it could make a little bit of a mess. We'll just take the pelmet off so we can access the tank. There's a lot of acro, bird's nest, montipora, samacora, leptocirrus. This tank is really thriving. We have Hydro 52 lights above this tank. We've got Ecotech. MP40 and Ecotech MP60 for wave makers. There's a Gaia 150. So it's a beautifully decked out tank, but we need to look at the skimmer and work out why it's not skimming to its optimum potential. So the customer has commented that the skimmer doesn't seem to be skimming consistently or uh, at the height that he tries to tune it to. So at first glance, the skimmer looks like it's actually skimming quite well. You can see that there's a little bit of foam in the cup and the neck is certainly dark with organic waste accumulating on it. So the first thing that we'll look at is the height that the, what, that the, level is, uh, that the bubbles are skimming at. So to do this, we'll take off the cup and that actually looks quite good. I think that um, the next thing we'll look at is gonna be the air intake because sometimes you can have a clog in the air line that runs down to the pump. I don't think this is gonna be the problem, but sometimes when you take off the muffler, you'll find that the amount of skimming will increase, but it hasn't really changed in this case. So I don't think the air intake is a problem. And I can actually feel that the uh, Venturi hose is uh, sucking air. So that's turned off, that's on. So I don't think the air intake is the problem. So that says to me, it's probably something to do with the pump. So I'm gonna turn the skimmer off, take it out, and we'll open up the pump and see if we can see what's happening with that. So we've got the skimmer out of the tank and something that I always do is just have a look at a close look at the skimmer whilst it's out of the water. Sometimes you'll find that the body of the skimmer can be clogged with things, uh, sponges, um, bits of debris, some things like that. But it looks relatively clean. We're going to take this opportunity to, to clean the skimmer up quite nicely as well. There's a few aptasia on it and there's a fair bit of muck in the top of the neck, so we'll clean that. But I certainly can't see any reason why it would be skimming any different to normal. So I'll open up the body and we'll have a look at the pump. So this skimmer is a NIOS 220 and they're a very reliable skimmer. And to access the pump in this NIOS, I need to take off these screws that fix the body of the skimmer to the base plate. And there's four of these. So we haven't actually opened up this skimmer for at least six months now. So it's a good opportunity to do some general maintenance on the skimmer and I'll certainly give it a bit of a clean. Vinegar, vinegar can also be good to vinegar bath the components of the skimmer. All right. So I need to access this pump. So I'm going to take off this diffusion plate.
So now we have access to the pump. Things that can go wrong with the pump are generally associated with the impeller. So we need to access the impeller to be able to see what the problem is. And sometimes you can have bits of sand that get in uh, between the impeller well and the body of the impeller. Uh, and that can slow down the flow. And I'm thinking it'll be something like that because it did seem to be skimming okay. Um, and having a bit of grit in there can actually cause intermittent skimming. So I need to actually remove this off the base plate. So I'll take off these screws and this will remove this bracket. I should just be able to loosen it really. And before I forget, something else that I'll do, it didn't seem like it was an air intake problem, but it's good to check the nozzle onto which your Venturi tube goes to ensure that it doesn't have any buildup that could slow the flow of air into the uh, pump. And I can see quite clearly that there is nothing blocking that. You can't blow through it. And it's definitely not blocked at all. So I know it's not an air intake issue. All right, so we've got the, uh, the pump off the base plate. To get into the impeller, which is what I think will be the problem, we need to take off four screws on the pump. So this is a Phillips head. So you wanna have, with this pump anyway, a Phillips head screwdriver as well as a flathead screwdriver. This, uh, this pump was definitely due for a clean. So most skimmers are very similar in the way they work and a change in the efficiency of the skimming or the height that the water is foaming at is generally caused from one of a few things. It's the air intake, it's the pump, it's the impeller, things like this. So pull this off. Okay, so straight away I see the problem. So this is the impeller and we'll pull this out in a second. However, the head of the impeller, which has this needle wheel, is clearly clogged with ketomorpha. Now, that will certainly cause the symptoms as described by the client. All right, oh, there's heaps of it in there. Okay. So that's our problem. Now, keto is a bit of a classic for causing this problem. Any keto that gets in here will almost certainly reduce the flow of the pump, which reduces the ability of it to skim. Um, other things can cause this as well. Things such as, um, you know, even bits of sand and shell can get in here. Ha uh, human hair can get in, into this. So we've cleaned that, but given we've got the, and we found the problem, given we've got the pump out of the skimmer, we might as well take this opportunity to pull the entire impeller out and we'll give it a bit of a clean. Okay, so most impellers are all the basic same design. They're a cylindrical magnet with the blades at the top and you can see that there's uh, a little bit of bacterial uh, accumulation on the magnet of the impeller. And so whilst I definitely don't think this was what was causing the problem, it's a good opportunity to give it a bit of a clean. So. I'm gonna use a toothbrush. I've got a little bit of tank water here. Any water's fine for this purpose. And I'm just going to clean it off. So normally I would give the blades a bit of a clean, but they're spotless. So that's perfect. And I'm also going to clean the impeller well. So I'm just gonna go around a few times with the toothbrush yeah, that's, that's really clean. Sometimes you get so much bacterial 
accumulation in here that it can slow the impeller and that means you've got less water being drawn in and so the skimmer will fluctuate with the level it's skimming at. But this is pretty good. So now I'll put it all back together. The impeller goes back in, just sort of pushes down like so. And we'll clean all the parts as we put it back together. So the pump and the diffusion plate are reassembled. We're just gonna clean the body of the skimmer and put it back on. So as I said, good opportunity to clean these Aptasia off. And it's a nice easy way to really get in there. I'm certainly not going to get this back to spotless. We don't have the time to do it today, but I'm gonna get the bulk of the gunk off it. So our skimmer's all clean, we'll put it back into the sump and then we'll show you how we tune it. Just plug it in. So the majority of skimmers on the market these days have got two ways that you tune them. The first is the amount of air that can enter the body of the skimmer. And with this NIOS, that is adjusted by this little dial at the top here. Now, my preference is to have this at the maximum open position so that you can get as much air into the skimmer. So I really try not to use that to control the height that the skimmer is skimming at. The second way that you control the height that the skimmer is skimming at is with the main valve which releases water from the skimmer. And so different skimmers have got different systems for this. The NIOS is very easy. You just uh, spin one way to open a valve at the bottom or close it and that will control the height that the skimmer is skimming at. Now I typically like to have the level of the skimmer between the bottom of the neck and about midway. Now, depending on the tank and what we're doing at any given time, we may choose to have it higher, and that's called running the skimmer more wet, and that will give you a more dilute amount of solution in the cup. But uh, I think I'll just turn it, I'll close the valve, valve a little bit, and we'll just raise it slightly. So it's certainly giving a consistent skim. I definitely think that we've fixed the problem with removing the keto from the impeller. And I'm just gonna raise it a little bit more. And 
It also takes a little while for any adjustment to that valve to show in the, the height that it's skimming at. So it's a good idea to, when you're adjusting your skimmer, to do it slowly and you know, give it a few minutes after every time you adjust it. So it's just creeping up uh, just to the bottom of the collection cup. And I'm probably going to leave it there. I don't want it to run too wet today. The main reason being is that if it happens that this uh, hasn't solved the problem, we want to ensure that it doesn't over skim on the customer. So I think I'll, I'll leave it there for now. But that's it. That's our skimmer. All fixed and cleaned and perfectly tuned. So that's our video for today. Thank you so much for all your support. We really appreciate all your comments and likes. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe. So thanks for watching and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.